Labor caucus, as Andrew said, meets tomorrow. And as we've heard, Susan Lee has been elected the new deputy leader of the Liberal Party. She sat down with my colleague, our political reporter, Andrea Crothers, a short time ago. Congratulations. It's a massive job ahead. Are you up for it? Absolutely. I've been in the parliament 20 years. I'm energetic, I'm enthusiastic. And while there are sober reflections to be made on the election result, I just can't wait to get out there and to reconnect with communities, to talk to people and to demonstrate that our strong Liberal brand is here for the future. Now, on uh, shadow portfolios, typically a Deputy Liberal Leader might go for a Treasury role. What will you be seeking? Look, I haven't turned my mind to that yet, and I really mean it. For me, it was about contacting Decided colleagues. By the end of the week, though. <laughs> well, look, it was about contacting colleagues, and I have spent most of this week on the phone, but it's really been quite a humbling experience talking to those who didn't make it back here and, you know, really understanding how they are, how they're feeling, and what I might be able to do to help, wanting to stay connected with some of our fantastic candidates for the future and just listening. So um, that's been my focus this week, back in the party room today to seek the support of my colleagues, which went well. And now it's time to take the next steps uh, with our leader, Peter Dutton. On Shadow Cabinet, should we expect that the Nationals will get an extra spot in it thanks to their uh, proportion being boosted? Look, that's something for the leader to decide and to have those conversations with the new leader of the Nationals, David Littleproud. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to his deputy, Senator Perrin Davey, a close friend who actually lives in my electorate. And so two rural women from New South Wales are um, going to take it uh, forward. But do you think they deserve another spot? Uh, look, I don't even know uh, what those relationships or ratios look like, what they did in the last election, uh, what they did in the last opposition. I just haven't really thought about it. Um, I am a strong and committed coalitionist and we work best when we work together and I expect that we will work very closely together going forward because as I said this morning to my colleagues in the party room, I'm firmly of the view that government is formed by a coalition of the Liberal and Nationals in the sensible centre of Australian politics. Is now the time for the Liberals to introduce quotas? I've talked about quotas in the past uh, and made it clear that that's a matter for our state divisions and something that I will talk with my state division when we next meet in New South Wales. But more importantly than that is the pipeline of capable, talented women who put their hand up to seek office and it might not be in federal parliament, it might be in some other, you know, at some other level within the community. But in all of the mentoring and work that I've done on women's issues over the years, that's what I have sought to do, number one. And that's what I will continue to do, to speak with women, to listen to their different perspectives, because they all do have different perspectives for themselves, for their children, for their futures, for their careers, for their families, and encourage where I can. Um, coming from a regional area, I too often see really bright, regional women who are hiding their light under a bushel who have something to say with passion and purpose and we want them to put their hand up and be that voice for their community or their issues. You were Environment Minister at a time when the Liberals got obliterated in many seats which were fought on the issue of climate, uh, climate policy. What responsibility must you take for that? We all have to take responsibility for the result, but we all have to interrogate the result carefully because in different parts of the country, our policies and our platform were soundly endorsed. So we shouldn't step back from that. and We shouldn't apologise for good policies that refer to the sensible centre, but also played our part internationally when it comes to climate. And one of the things that I often spoke about during the campaign was the technology roadmap and the role that Australia is right now playing in encouraging developing countries internationally with the conversations that we're having, with the agreements that we're signing to actually support those countries move to lower emissions energy sources. And I think that that's work that is really valuable and will stand us in good stead. But as Peter Dutton said this morning, our climate policies will be sensible. 
I represent an electorate where people don't all have high incomes, many have low and fixed incomes and I'm very conscious of how our policies will play for them, for their families, for the cost of electricity and therefore how that will feed in to the cost of living.